Welcome to A Day in My Life as a Data Scientist. So it's been a while, I think, since I did one of these uh, data science focused uh, day in my life videos, but I wanted to check in and do one of these again. It's been a pretty busy couple of weeks and I've been working on a lot of cool projects. I wanted to share some of that with you guys. Also, uh, my cats have grown a lot since probably you've last seen them. So that's that's pretty neat. And I also have a lot of personal life updates too to share in this video. Uh, so hopefully you guys stick till the end. Anyway, I got a meeting in the next few minutes. I got to get to that, but I'll catch you guys back right after. All right, so I just got done with our morning check-in. This one was kind of slightly longer just because my manager has been out for a couple weeks and we had a lot of updates, but I figured might as well share some of the updates uh, with you guys too. So currently I'm working on a couple of key projects. Uh, one of them is automating some of the stuff that we do on the support side based on uh, repetitive questions that we get. Uh, I've used uh, semantic analysis, NLP, and a couple other algorithms to try and find common conversation topics and clump them together, and also try to find the common responses. Uh, and it, it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be. Um, I found a couple that were pretty easy to automate, stuff like links, you know, go fill out this form or go email, go email this person. Uh, those are pretty easy to automate, but the ones that require some sort of uh, thought to it or more questions, that, that's kind of hard. So uh, I'm working on that right now. I'm also working on two other things. That driver standings project I talked about, I think a couple videos back, uh, essentially we have a way of scoring our drivers or, or think of Uber. Uh, if you rate your driver four stars, five stars, over a period of time, they get a ranking. Um, and I guess the rating is part of it, but there's also some other logic that goes into it. Um, we have something similar on our end and I was tasked to basically revamp or recreate the entire scoring system uh, to, I guess, help us indicate or help us figure out if a driver is reliable or productive. Uh, and I found a couple, um, I I've made an app on Hex to display some of the findings that I found and suggest, uh, I guess, to the PMs what they could do uh, depending on what their definition of productive and reliable is. Um, it's an interactive app so they can see how the distribution changes uh, with this new uh, equation that I've made. Um, if they increase the weights here, how the distribution graph will change and stuff like that. So depending on what they want, if they want it to be skewed to a certain area or if they want it to be normally distributed, they can play with that and figure it out themselves. Uh, I've also got a lot of work uh, to do regarding our ATL. So something broke last week. Uh, it's been, I guess, it's been bound to happen for a while just because we haven't really paid much attention to it. I think the guy who built this specific pipeline left two years ago and nobody's touched it or explored it since. So that broke and uh, I've been looking into it and trying to find ways to fix it slash make it more efficient. Um, one of the problems I noticed is we're using raw JSON normalization, which uh, to my understanding, which if serverless doesn't really take very nicely. So um my one of my proposed solutions is changing that and also maybe using incremental materialization with dbt to reduce the workload on our database or data warehouse sorry so yeah that's what i'm that's what i'm prioritizing right now uh just because i think you know that is blocking a lot of other people from you know making their own transformations or our ETL to be updated on a daily basis and stuff like that. So I do also have a couple of meetings today. We have a company wide meeting every Wednesday. So that's what I'm going to be doing right after this. And I have to prepare for a presentation I have tomorrow with uh, some of my stakeholders for that driver scoring uh, driver standings project. So I will keep you guys updated along the way. But right now I just want to try and brainstorm some ideas uh, on how to implement this solution I have for that ETL problem I talked about. All right, uh, it's currently afternoon and uh, it's my wife's birthday this weekend and I got her coffee machine. Uh, and I, I personally don't drink coffee, nor do I want to, but for her birthday, I was thinking of uh, making a latte or an espresso and I don't have any experience operating a coffee machine. So I figured, you know, while she's out, I might as well get a couple shots and practice. Uh, I'm gonna I've never operated one of these before the best I've done is like a French press So I'm gonna try and watch a couple of tutorials and uh, see if I can get a decent looking latte uh, Please don't judge me, but if it turns out remotely good or drinkable I'm, I'm gonna count that as a win 
Uh, also, I do wish her happy birthday in the comment section down below. By the time this video is out, it'll be her birthday. So uh, I'd appreciate if you guys wrote some birthday wishes down in the comment section below. <laughs> So it's currently 7 p.m. and I think I'm gonna call it quits for work today and start again tomorrow. I've done all the preparation I can for that meeting tomorrow and I also have uh, a lot of headway for that uh, new pipeline or optimizing the current pipeline we have um, when extracting data uh, from this specific integration. So uh, I'm gonna start dinner and then I think I'm gonna come back and work on my app. Uh, and also wanted to talk to you guys about some of the stuff uh, that I'm doing outside of work to grow as a data scientist, as a developer, uh, and also other income streams that I currently have and that I'm looking to add on. So stay tuned for that. All right, I'm about to go to the gym real quick before I end my day, and then I'm gonna try and talk about some of the stuff I'm doing on the side to continuously grow as a data scientist and also to try and, uh, I guess, split my income stream and not totally rely on my nine to five. I know uh, it's been a dream of mine, at least for a while, to uh, be self-reliant, self-employed, whatever the word is, but actually sustain my income, sustain my cost, living costs and stuff like that, be able to provide for my family without relying on an employer. So uh, I'm pretty excited about some of the stuff that I'm gonna be sharing in this video. So it's currently close to 9 p.m. and I think I'm gonna call it for the night. I've done some stuff for my app. I added this SMTP service, I guess, uh, Resend. Uh, and I'm also planning to add another uh, service tomorrow. I left off my app build today uh, with some master resume work uh, with some pre-built components that I have, like the resume score model or model. Uh, essentially the area where you can upload your resume and get a score. I wanna allow users to use their master resume instead of just using a PDF version of their resume. Uh, I'm like, I think 50% there when it comes to allowing users to use that master resume, uh, which would send that master resume from our database to OpenAI or other LLMs, depending on which one I use uh, for that specific section to get a score. And uh, I think I mentioned this in some of the previous videos, but uh, essentially around this time, Every night I go onto my computer and I type some stuff that I'm gonna be doing for the next day. So right now, I just wrote up some of the stuff that I need to do for tomorrow for my app. Uh, and this, I don't know if you guys have uh, seen this app, it's called Stickies, right? On Mac. And I think it's like, I think it's super OP. Yeah, it's been a game changer for me personally. I have one for my app, I have one for my personal life, I have one for work. Uh, and it truly helps me stay on task and you know, uh, aligned with what I got to do and I try my best to update this as frequently as possible uh, It doesn't need to be super descriptive All I need really is just headlines of what I need to do and then sometimes for work I already have tickets with documentation or more detailed context on what I need to do and for my app. I also have some sort of uh, Like I guess contextual knowledge based on like comments. I leave in my code or uh, other things uh, So yeah, I think it's pretty neat if you guys want to check it out I think it's a, a downloaded app, like a default app you have on your Mac. It's called Stickies. But yeah, things things have been pretty good today. Uh, I would say productivity-wise, I'm pretty happy with how things went. Uh, and tomorrow is going to be slightly less productive just because I have a lot more meetings and I also have to edit this video. But I'm very optimistic of what, uh, or I'm very happy with what I've been doing for both work and also for, for this app. I did want to mention some of the stuff that I'm doing outside of work to improve my, or stay up to date with the field and improve my skills. One of those things is this app. I think this this building this app has been very uh, helpful and beneficial for me in terms of my professional development and also just understanding how things work, trying out new tools, uh, getting new exposure in different areas of the tech field. Uh, but aside from that, I'm also, I guess, uh, learning more uh, within my niche. So uh, as a data scientist, I, I try my best every quarter to 
find a specific section within data science. Sometimes it's like last quarter it was ML ops and uh, you know, deploying machine learning models. In Q1, it was deep learning. This quarter, I want to get into more data engineering uh, and also uh, data architecture stuff. So but yeah, what I'm trying to say here is the stuff that you do outside of work truly does matter because within work, your growth is truly capped for the most part to your company's growth. But outside of work, your growth is truly just capped on how much time and effort you're willing to put into yourself. One of the things that I found helpful was just looking at uh, the industry, looking at the skills on job descriptions and trying to understand what they're looking for, whether it be a specific tool, whether it be a specific, you know, like a specialization, forecasting, deep learning, LLMs, RAGs, whatever it may be, uh, and trying to work backwards from there. And I also found that parallel roles like software engineering, DevOps, and stuff like that might be helpful skills to learn, which is why I've been spending a lot of time learning cloud tools and also trying to implement stuff with code, new languages like JavaScript, I'm also trying to learn Go when I can. Uh, and I also have like tabs uh, constantly in the background or you know subconsciously in the background, newsletters that I sign up to to help me uh, stay up to date with things that are happening in the industry right now. So uh, those things are definitely helpful. And I did mention I wanna talk about some income streams. Obviously my primary driver when it comes to income is my W2 income from work, but I've been doing this thing, this YouTube thing for about a year and a half now. And but yeah, over that time spent, I found that the, the income I can get from other, I guess, other domains like affiliate income, building your own product, advertising and stuff like that uh, is a real possibility. And if I do want a future where I am not fully reliant on a W-2 or a full-time job, uh, this is a very good path to go down. But yeah, my point with all that is that I know right now the market isn't the best uh, and it's especially hard to find a job. And if you can afford living without a job and just upskilling with projects or volunteer work or unpaid work, that's great. But if you can't, you're gonna need to find another stream of income. And I think starting something like this, a social media channel, a platform where you document your struggles or you document your successes, just document your story basically, uh, will eventually hopefully lead to opportunities. I found that everyone I've started with when I started YouTube about a year and a half ago, uh, I noticed a couple other channels that started around the same time with me. We've all, whoever stayed consistent, whoever stuck with it, have all found some sort of value, some sort of benefit from this. In fact, I talked to a lot of them to this day and some have podcasts, some just love doing what they do. Some found a lot of influential people who they connected and became mentees or mentors for, which is super great. So uh, truly, I think, if one pathway seems to be blocked, try and open your eyes, try and step outside and look at the box from a macro lens. Uh, there's probably another route that you could go down. There's probably other opportunities that you could take uh, that you just haven't really seen yet. So try to open your eyes to that. But yeah, anyway, I think I'm gonna close out the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this Day in the Life of Data Scientist video. If you did, leave a like down below. Like I said before, it's my wife's birthday this weekend, so it would truly mean the world to me if you could leave a birthday wish down below. Her name is Isabel, and she's the best. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, do leave a like down below. Consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.